Peace family. In this segment, we are going to be talking about the power of the yoni. The yoni, the sacred lady parts. You have a JJ, Yahuha. This term has many different names, but the truth of the matter is we have been conditioned as women to think that our vagina is taboo, it's dirty, especially during certain times of the month. But in this segment, I am going to talk about all of the magical, mysterious, powerful energies that come with the yoni and learning and understanding menstrual magic and yoni powers. So I noticed that there's been a trend on social media where women will say, yeah, you know, my kitty cat makes him act crazy. Like there was a post I put on my Instagram stories a while ago that was talking about how this man, he was going crazy, breaking the door down and everybody was joking, saying like, dang, that girl must have some good cat. Now, my thing is, you know, what is your definition of good? Okay, good sex, good kitty cat. Because if it's really that good, why is it making this man act so insane and aggressive? Would you wanna have sex with somebody that makes you act crazy like that? Or do you want to be intimate with someone who gives you peace and tranquility and stability and security? Someone who makes you feel safe, not someone who makes you want to break a door down and act like a, a crazy stalker psycho. <laughs> so we got to ask ourselves, are we being conditioned to enjoy toxic relationships, toxic love, toxic sexual energy? And why are we so addicted to this type of energy that's not good for us? Now, if the power of yoni and sex magic is about manifestation, it's about transformation, it's about elevating yourself to a whole nother level. This is what many of the occult schools once taught. Sex wasn't something that was profane or taboo or disgusting. It was a sacred act that was honored and highly revered. When we think about our yoni, right, it is the portal of life. It is the portal for which we bring forth a new child. We bring forth manifestation of the potential, right? So as women having this sacred power between our legs, we can also manifest not only children, but we can manifest ideas. We can manifest creations. We can manifest thought forms and dreams and goals by manifesting these things and utilizing our yoni powers. Now, if your yoni, your sacred space, is a gateway from how you manifest things into this reality, you got to take a really close look at how is the health of your yoni? How is the pH health? How is the spiritual health? How do you feel? Do you hold emotions in your sacred womb? So when we think about our sacred womb space, right, we got to think about who we allow into that space, what type of energy dwells there. Do we have discomfort? Do we have tension there? Do we feel at ease there? Now, the sacral chakra is responsible for this sacral energy, this sexual energy, and also the root chakra as well is connected. This is why a lot of the times when we don't feel safe or secure in a relationship, you may notice lower back pains. Even having instability, let's say, in finances, in the home, and money, we have lower back pains or irregular periods or mood swings. This is why women tend to be more irate or emotional during their moon cycles. When we are menstruating, any type of energies or emotions that we store inside of our womb It gets released, it comes out. Our shadow goddess, dark goddess self comes out. She expresses herself unapologetically. So whenever we're in our menstrual cycle, this is a time where we want to reflect. This is what the indigenous women would do. They would go to their menstrual huts. They would go into deep meditation. They will reflect and work together and talk about their dreams and visions and share it with the tribe or the group so that that way they would know what was coming about weather, agriculture, any dangers, any wars, any strategies, things of that nature, 
the women were highly revered, especially during their moon cycle time. It was a time where they were known to be able to communicate with God or to the divine. Because we've lost touch with our feminine powers and our yoni powers, because patriarchy, because of indoctrination, because we've been taught that menstrual cycles are disgusting and to be repulsed and not discussed or talked about, the truth of the matter is everything that they tell you to shy away from or to run away from is what we actually need to be running towards, is what we need to be studying. There's a reason why they want to keep us away from that science. The condition of your yoni really dictates the powers of your manifestation abilities as a woman. And I'm going to explain why this is, okay? If your yoni is the gateway in which you manifest things, right? Depending on the energy that you hold there, it will show you how things will manifest, so this is kind of like the analogy of, let's say you're watching a movie on a projector screen, right? Now, if the lens of the projector is dirty, no matter how good or bad the movie is, you won't really be able to see it because your perception of it is clouded, is dirty, right? But when you clean off the lens of that projector, you can see more clearly. You can enjoy the movie better. You can see what's going on. Things that you couldn't see before is now more clear. So think about your yoni kind of being that projector, right? Whatever that it projects or it produces into the material realm really dictates upon the current state that it's in. If it's filthy, if it's imbalanced, if it's if the chakra energies are not stable there, if it's too much traumatic energy held there, then everything that you manifest outside of that is also going to be an extension of those repressed emotions and pains. In order to release these pains, we can do yoga exercises. We can drink certain herbal tinctures and herbal remedies to help balance our hormones and our emotions. We can even do psychedelics and do sacred medicine to help us release traumas and deal with childhood issues that maybe our conscious mind has suppressed into our subconscious so that way we don't have to feel these things. But the subconscious mind, it knows and remembers everything. And if we ignore these pains, we push them down into our sacral chakra, which causes infertility, pain during sex. It also causes cysts on your ovaries okay pcos it also can cause miscarriages it can cause all types of issues down there ph imbalances uterary tract infections yeast infections anything that you can think of any type of vaginal disease or illness these things manifest because this is an energetic problem things manifest energetically before they become physical and this is how we can start to understand what it is that our yoni is telling us. Another example is our yoni can let us know if we are compatible or not with our romantic partner. Okay, sexual compatibility is a very real thing. And depending on whether or not a person is sexually compatible with you will let you know if you guys have chemistry together spiritual chemistry physical chemistry emotional and mental chemistry these things are displayed in the act of sexual relations it's not just about does this person make me feel good physically do they make me feel aroused it's more to it than just that do i feel connected with this person when we're intimate do i feel safe how do i feel afterwards do i feel emotional do i feel secure do I feel unstable? Do I feel nervous or anxious? Because as women, we can tap into these emotions and when we really listen to our yoni, it tells us whether or not this person's feelings for us is true. If it's not, if they're involved with other sexual partners and maybe not telling us. This is why a lot of the times when we have sexual relations with a person, we have become one with them and we also are connected to their thoughts, their moods and their emotions. This is how we know when our partner is lying to us or deceiving us or even if there's someone else because we can energetically pick up on this vibration. 
of an invader of a foreign energy that doesn't belong to us. So to go back to the original point that we made about women who say their sex is so good, their yoni is so good that they make dudes go crazy. They make them obsessed. They make them aggressive. And so my question to you is, what kind of energy do you hold in your vagina that causes your partner to react in such a way? Shouldn't your yoni manifest peace, prosperity, tranquility, right? Isn't that the type of energy that we want to hold inside of our womb? So really ask yourself this question, you know, when, how, what type of energy does my yoni produce? What type of energy am I manifesting with my yoni powers? Am I creating chaos and dysfunction or am I creating peace and prosperity? Because if your partner is acting crazy after having sex with you, then there may need to be some self-reflection going on here. What traumas do you hold there? Our partners absorb the energy that we have and we absorb their energy as well. So not only are we focusing on our energy, but also our partners. After we have intimacy with them, how do we feel? If we start to feel insecure and crazy and super aggressive, then it's something that's not right with them. And it's something that's not really compatible with our energies. And there is something that our sex is telling us that needs to be healed. Sexuality, sexual energy is supposed to be healing and transformative. So take this time to really dig deep into the menstrual mysteries and to learn more about your yoni and to learn more about how to communicate with her and how she communicates with you. Taking yoni steams, doing a sits bath, drinking herbal teas, doing meditations and yogas, and any type of holistic methods to purify your yoni, drinking more water, okay? It's the little things that create balance within us. So, I hope that this episode has opened up your mind to the possibilities of what the yoni really can do, the potential powers that it can manifest. Well, until next time, family, Kanja Queen signing out. Peace.